Hey everybody, before this video starts, I just want to let you know, uh, we had a little bit of a problem with some of the video quality uh, settings on the camera before we shot this video. So some of the quality may not be on level with the other videos that we typically shoot. And I apologize in advance, but we still wanted to push these videos out to you guys so you get to experience them. So with that, here we go. Quarter to seven in the morning. We've been on the road already for about an hour and a half. Heading into sunrise soon. Next stop, Jacksonville, Florida. City of Jacksonville, County of Duval. At daybreak. Not too shabby, Florida. Not too shabby. We are coming up on our first roadside attraction of the trip. The smallest church in America. Built in 1949. This is it. So this is America's smallest church. It actually had burned down, vandals burned this down in 2015. And then the community built it back again in just 18 months. I don't know if we can go in. Wow. There you go, the lights just came on. That scared me. This is so cool. Wow. I guess it's like a little photo op with this cane. You have the Ten Commandments. All people who do. Do not place anything on the windowsill. Oh yeah, you can sign the book. Yeah. Book. And people have left their prayers here. Pray for Joel. Prayers to heal people. Wow. And you have different denominations of Bibles. The International, the Gideons, King James. I'm not sure what the Great Hope is. Wow, and there are a ton of prayers underneath here, as well as a hat. Wow. I wonder oh, if they still hold out. little um, things here. I don't know. <laughs> Mary's hard at work here. Checking pictures. Beautiful. This is pretty awesome. There you go. Follow my Instagram. I've got flowers. I've got this nice little work here. Let's check out what's outside. May this bell ring out as praise to the Lord. You know I gotta ring it, right? <laughs> it is harder to ring than it looks. Here it is, the world's smallest, or at least America's smallest church. I don't know if there would be a smaller church elsewhere. Outside here, we have some statues that are a little worse for wear. We got a statue of Jesus. That's stop number one for us on the day. Um, we're gonna get back on the road. Next stop here. I just wanted to see this water body because it looked amazing from the car. Here we go. Look at this. The fish are just jumping out of the water. The next stop of the day is a place that we've passed by on 95 many times on the way up north. We're in Georgia, south of Savannah. This is the Mighty Eighth Air Force Museum. Here we are in the foyer. First thing I did when I came in was use the men's room. They had some awesome propaganda posters in there, but I couldn't film because there's people in there. But out here, some really awesome tales. So we paid our admissions. It's $12 a person. 
there is one plane that's on display in here. And they have a series of movies that you can watch and some other exhibits. And then here we have some plaques dedicated to different squadrons. And we have a lot more plaques for bomber groups, carriers, and fighters. And we've got some bus on here. We'll start with Jimmy Stewart. Lieutenant General E.G. Buck Schuler Jr. Major General Frederick Lewis Anderson Jr. Did a really good job on these sculpts. Getting the hat and everything in there too, and the details. They actually list the person that did the sculpture too. This is General James H. Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> Just making me laugh now. Born in 1896. He was the commander of the 8th Air Force in their final defeat on the German Luftwaffe. I don't know if I'm saying it the right way. General Ira C. Eager. He actually enlisted as an infantry private the day after the United States declared war on Germany in 1917 and rose to the rank of captain. And the last bust is for General Carl A. Tuohy Spots, 1891 to 1974. And he led the bombing campaign against German petroleum production. The Louis E. Lyle Rotunda. So there's some medals. And instead of challenge coins that exist today, they actually had this short snorter that they would produce while they were out drinking. We're gonna go in. American aviator Zygmunt Wujek. We've got some awesome history that goes year by year here. German films, and we actually have some Nazi memorabilia. A picture of Hitler with children. This was a German summer flight suit. And so they have a tunic and service cap. More German memorabilia. British officer's service jacket. Such an amazing picture. When England declared war on Germany. And all these propaganda posters are just amazing. And we have some German items here. This is a field police medallion, an ID booklet. We've got an armband and medals, a German K98 bayonet, and a dagger. And we have more German military yeah. outfits. Across the way we have items from Britain. I love this, that ration can is in such pristine condition. I mean, we're going on almost a hundred years at this point, 80 years. Look at these goggles and the detail where it's like shattered over the right eye. And this insignia came from a plane. Corporal Arthur Parker cut this insignia from the tail section. Downed on the morning of August 31st, 1940. Wow, they have a Luger pistol in here. I don't think I've ever seen one in real life. We've got daggers and flags, belt buckles, and badges. A 
And that brings us to Japan. We have a Japanese flag autographed by family members. And a cloth belt. Bayonet. This is a piece of the USS Arizona and a Navy enlisted man's cap from Pearl Harbor. This is amazing. This is exactly what I was hoping to see in here. This is an A2 flying jacket, Rose of York. Look at that. Yes, look at this. This is so cool. And we've got squadron patches. I like the devil, but I gotta be honest. This knockoff Bugs Bunny is amazing. <laughs> These are German aircraft sections. I've got an old school canteen cup. Whoa! This is so awesome. We have an engine. This is for a P 47 Thunderbolt. Go in. Ah. Mission briefing here. And there's a film in there, let's see. Look at these maps and the way that they had everything laid out. It's like an old propaganda film. We're coming into this room that in the back there has a B-17 bomber. We have a lot more pieces. Remember Bay here, flying sunglasses. You got a wallet. I love the certificate, the Lucky Bastard Club. Flak removed from a left leg of a pilot. Wow. Goggles, gas mask. A life preserver vest. Look at how small that vest is compared to just how big and fat people are today. <laughs> Survivor knife, smoking kit. U.S. uniform for Albert Schlegel. So he was shot down, put in a shallow grave, and then they found his remains 72 years later. And this is his jacket for everyone to see. And we have a flight jacket here. Again, maybe not the most PC patch for today's times, but this is the outfit. Let's check out the back of his jacket. So cool. And this jacket belonged to this gentleman, Bill Getz. Here comes the B-17. Wow. One of only seven known to exist today, this Crossley CT3 Pup was a lightweight Jeep type vehicle capable of being transported by air and the C-47 Skytrain. Look at how small this thing is. Yeah, but so many people can ride on it. Two up there, two back there. We've got a Gresh Victory guitar. Love it. Love it. I love that under this B-17, we have a bomb. And we have one of the motorcycles. These are all of the folks that took place Restoring this B-17 to this pristine condition. We've got these bombs 
I love that Kilroy was here. 500 pound bomb. Cockpit view. Here's another look. And we have a turret here. And here, they have a mock up of the B 17 turret. There's one heading your way. I love it. So you have this parachute here, but in the parachute, projections wow. of planes going over. And then here, kind of a POW camp. It's a blanket. I was able to manage to get through the first two passes. Here he is, embroidering. Here's POWs. And a mock up of how they were kept. And they have a mock up of a safe house. Wow. Listening to BBC broadcast was for bitten by the Nazis. Huh. So hidden in the fireplace was an escape and evasion radio. That's awesome. We have a room here full of pieces from the bomber groups and the fighter groups. Amazing. Wow. Wow. The suitcase has every mission listed out in the places that this soldier went to. This jacket belonged to Sergeant Eddie Deerfield. He wore a number of missions and then when he completed his combat tour in 1944 he turned artist to paint the 303's adopted name Hell's Angels with a bomb for each of its 30 missions. That is awesome. And this is a picture of them. Uh, amazing. This is really much bigger than what I had thought, especially from looking on the outside. It just seemingly goes on and on. With so much stuff packed in here. Wow, B-52 vertical stabilizer. Wow. Not to be outdone by the eager beaver. World War II era jewelry that was fashioned from metals. Yeah, some watches. The Tuskegee Airmen. I saw a movie by George Lucas about them. I can't remember the name of the movie off the top of my head. A few years ago. Really good movie. It's their training school brochure. And then they have an exhibit on Fly Girls. That was probably the most influential experience that I had as a child. I was fortunate in having a mother who did not believe in holding back me because I was a girl and urged me to do anything that I wanted to or could do. This is Lillian Ruth Dixon Kelly's 
jacket and flight suit. And she flew AT-6s and PT-17s. They were nicknamed Zoot Suits. So that's where the Zoot Suit name came from. And you notice on the back, they don't have graphic painted. Only the patch on the front. I love the different hairstyles and the names. The P-38 kills me. I love that in the exhibit, they actually have pictures of how they look now after they were flying. Civilian life pictures. This was a really cool stop off. Uh, $12 again. There was so much more stuff that we didn't get to. There's four movies in there. One that's uh, a little bit longer than the others. We didn't have enough time to see everything. They pretty much tell you that you could spend days in there seeing everything. But we had passed this place a few times going up and down 95 and I'm really happy we stopped here. Next time we have to budget more time to go through everything in a lot more detail. And here we are. South Carolina. No way. Welcome to Columbia, home of the South Carolina Gamecocks. It's the Hootie and the Blowfish Monument in Columbia, South Carolina. The channel just hit 60,000 subscribers. So what better place to celebrate than a little bit of Jack in the Box? Jumping Jack Splash, a Jack's exclusive? This is a thing of beauty that should be appreciated for its majesty. These are absolutely amazing. This is Jess's first time having a Jack's taco. <laughs> the verdict? Too much stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Yeah, but you put hot sauce all over no, it. No, it came with it. Check out this spider outside the window while we're eating at Jack's. Focus. Or don't. Look at that thing. It's Carrie. But not Ohio. Mountains. We're not in Orlando anymore. Traffic jam in the mountains. We've made our way to Beach Mountain and we wanted to do a character meet and greet. We came a little bit too late. Uh, but outside the Pinnacle Inn Resort, you have the little Tin Man hanging there. This is very reminiscent of Blair Witch Project. Instead of little stick bundles, as you go from hotel to hotel in the area during Autumn and Oz weekend, you find characters of the Wizard of Oz. So we've made it to the top of the mountain. This was another journey. Tomorrow's video will be all about Oz, our return to Oz. That will be the name of it, because everything lately is the return. We're here with Paul actually too. Woo, hey. Paul actually is his name. Paul actually. And uh, far. Glinda oh and the witch are dancing together over in the distance. I'll be right there, do my little intro. Llamas. Horses. We'll be doing this tomorrow night as well. The third annual Oz Ball. We are going to the Beach Mountain Resort. Oh, this is cool. So the museum for Oz is up here now too. So we came over this way to go to Beach Mountain Brewing Company. Food, beverages, restrooms. Pay no attention to that sign. It's actually closed. All right, we are all settled in for the night. It has been a long day multiple journeys all over the place but we're gonna say good night for now so thanks a lot for watching thanks for coming along with us on the road trip thank you very much for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions treat others the way you want to be treated have a great night see you guys